Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. Welcome back to Class of Fridays. Every Friday we look at the G.I. Joe Classified Series figures. This time we are looking at Snake Supreme Cobra Commander. I got this from Hasbro Pulse a long time ago. It's just been sitting on my shelf. I opened it on my New Year's Eve live stream and I'm ready to take a closer look at it now. Let's start by looking at the box. And the front of the box has some gorgeous character artwork, really nicely done. And there is a very ornate design on the other sides of the box, on the sides, on the back, and on the top. Not on the bottom, that's just the copyright information. The back of the box has these die-cut windows, which reveals more artwork behind it. The outer box is a sleeve, which can be slid off to reveal the inner box. The inner box has this very ornate cobra design. This is special. I really love this. This does make this look like a special action figure. The character artwork is continued on the side, and the back has more of that design in gold, black, and red. That artwork is also on the top. This is number, number nine in the series. That's Number nine, not number 60. This side of the box has some symbols which represent his specialties. This one means he is a fan of the movie Patton. This has four bullets, which is too shy of being a six shooter. This symbol means he is a fan of Marilyn Manson. And this means in order to fall asleep, he counts sheep. Seriously, what is that supposed to be? Turning our attention back to the front of the box, there is a seam down the center. And to reveal the action figure, you just split it at that seam pull it apart and there is Snake Supreme Cobra Commander. Let's take this figure out of the packaging and take a look at it. Here is Snake Supreme Cobra Commander out of the packaging and what an amazing looking action figure. This is mostly a re-release of an earlier Cobra Commander action figure and this is something a lot of collectors have complained about with this line is so early in the line we get a lot of re-releases of the same character and I do understand that complaint. If you're going to re-release the same action figure we already bought with some different colors you really have to do something special with it to make it worth buying again with this figure though there is a lot more than just a color change and we will look at all of it before we move on let's take a moment to note the cobra throne artwork on the inside of the packaging that is a nice touch and really beautiful let's take a look at snake supreme cobra commander next to the first cobra commander action figure from 1982 and we can see there are some similarities they have the helmet, they have the faceplate, they have one common accessory, but the colors are wildly different. Version 1 of Cobra Commander is in light blue. This coloration for Snake Supreme Cobra Commander is more similar to version 2, the hooded Cobra Commander, which was in a darker blue and had red and gold highlights. Here is Snake Supreme Cobra Commander with a couple other classified Cobra Commander action figures, and this is what I'm talking about. They are giving us the same character and really the same figure, multiple times with minor updates. These two retail release Cobra Commanders were both number six in the series, and this one has a darker color scheme similar to the Snake Supreme Cobra Commander. So if you did not want to shell out extra money for this guy, I can see why you would be perfectly happy with this one. For accessories, Snake Supreme Cobra Commander included a Cobra headed scepter. Looks really good in gold plastic. It is a tight fit in his hand, but fortunately the plastic on both the figure and the accessory are flexible enough that they will bend rather than break. That is nice. I wish more vintage figures were made that way. There's that scepter on all sides. Really excellent sculpting. And the next accessory also has a cobra head. It is the sword, which does have a sheath on the figure. It's a tight fit, but it works. The sword has a sculpted cobra head it's a bit different from the scepter but still really nicely done in gold on the handle it has red and gold on the blade a uh, really wicked looking blade and nice accessory looks like something cobra commander would carry not really a combat weapon but more of a ceremonial weapon perhaps he uses this to bestow knighthood on his favorite troopers this is how you get your code name in cobra his next accessory has this holster this gold holster on the figure belt and that is 
this gold laser pistol. This laser pistol in gold plastic is an update of the Venom laser pistol that came with version 1 and version 2 of Cobra Commander, an excellent callback to that vintage accessory. That laser pistol will fit in the figure's hand and it looks really good. That gold coloring fits with the deco on the figure and again it has the holster. This holster is essential. It is my preference when an action figure can carry all of his accessories at the same time. You don't have to leave anything in a box and you don't have to leave anything on a shelf. The figure has all of his stuff. The figure includes this gold globe which is symbolic of Cobra Commander's goal of taking over the world and this will fit in the figure's left hand. He can hold on to that and this accessory isn't really necessary but it's nice that he has it. You can imagine Cobra Commander in his hubris having something like this. The other accessories are extra hands which you can swap out. The other Cobra Commander figures also came with extra hands like this. Let's go ahead and pop out the other hands and put these in. Here are the alternate hands on the figure. He has a fist and my finger points. I know collectors like these. I get it. It provides opportunity for more poses, but this is also a problem I have with some modern action figures. I mentioned my preference for action figures that can hold all of their accessories. I don't want to leave things in the box, and I don't want to leave things on a shelf to get lost. Well, this is what I'm talking about. The figure can't have all four hands at the same time, and these hands cannot hold any accessories, so to swap these out, something is going to be left behind. I put the other hands on the figure so we can take a look at the articulation. He has the excellent articulation we should expect from classified figures, excellent range of motion on the head, all the way around, up and down, not much side to side tilt though, arms up at the shoulder and swivel at the shoulder all the way around, a twist at the upper arm, double jointed elbows, twists at the wrists, and hinges at the wrist as well, hinges on both wrists. He has a hinge at the rib cage for a bit of an ab crunch. My figure doesn't move very far forward though. He has a twist for the torso that is not hindered by this overcoat. He has a leg split that is kind of hindered by the overcoat. He has a good forward motion on the leg at the hip, not so much a back motion. He has a thigh cut. He has double jointed knees. He has a twist at the boot cut. He has hinged and rocker ankles. Let's look at the figure itself and let's start by putting it side by side with a retail release Cobra Commander and you can see it is basically the same figure. There are some differences other than the color. There are some differences in the accessories. The retail release does not have the holster. It also has this plastic cape rather than the soft good cape on the Snake Supreme Cobra Commander. The base figure is the same though. They started with the same figure and built up from there. On his head he has a helmet that I want to say is a very dark blue, almost black. It looks more black in person, but it's turning out more blue on my camera. It's a very, very dark blue, if it is blue, almost black. He has gold and red highlights on that helmet and a gold faceplate. He has a soft goods cape with two gold cobra emblems on the fasteners. The cape has a dark snake skin pattern on the outside, and it is red on the inside. And that cape is forked like a snake's tongue. I like that a lot. The cape is held on with elastic bands that go around the arms, and if you're careful, you can remove it. He has a red and gold collar, red epaulets on his shoulders, a black snakeskin pattern on his upper chest and back and upper arms trimmed in gold. On his chest, he has a gold chain and red cobra buttons and a black cobra emblem directly on the front of the chest that is molded in, not just painted on. And on the chest and the back he has this extremely ornate gold cobra pattern printed on. This is taken from the box art. This is basically the box art printed onto the figure. It looks great. It looks very regal. And this is what makes this figure special. He has red armor on his forearms with gold cobra emblems. He does not miss an opportunity for cobra branding. The belt, which has the sheath for the sword and the holster for the pistol, is a separate piece. It's not really intended to be removable, but you probably could remove it if you worked with it. The tail of his waistcoat is also 
also a separate piece. The legs have a black snakeskin pattern on the outer legs, trimmed in gold, looking really good. He has tall boots with red knee pads, again with gold highlights. He has more of that printing on the outer boots with that snake pattern. That looks really excellent. And he has gold straps on his feet and red pointy toes. Is this Snake Supreme Cobra Commander figure worth it? I think this is the perfect figure to release as an exclusive and not as a standard retail release. If you don't want the extra bits and the extra deco and you see this as just a re-release of a previous action figure and you already have your definitive Cobra Commander, you could easily pass on this. If you do like alternate versions of figures and you like the extra effort put into this figure, well, there you have it. But if you don't get it, it will not leave a gaping hole in your collection. That was my review of Snake Supreme Cobra Commander. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll be doing these classified figure reviews every Friday. And of course, we are still doing vintage G.I. Joe toy reviews. Please subscribe to the channel. I have a huge back catalog of vintage G.I. Joe toy reviews. Make sure you check those out. You can find me on social media, on Facebook and Twitter. And I have a website, hcc788.com. If you want to help me continue doing these videos, please check out Patreon. You can have your name in a video. I'll be back soon with another G.I. Joe toy review. Until then, remember only... Only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe.